Good morning. For those who require a complete quiet and stillness in the night in order to slumber peacefully, the infestation of invading insects inconsiderately imposing upon its inhabitants when incessant intonations irregulate the imperturbation of the luminous evening, thus irritating the individual and incrementally increasing insomnia in those whom inspire an ideal night's interlude. The main culprit of these restless nights is the gorillus competris, or otherwise known as the cricket. Many a poor soul have lost countless hours of sleep each and every night due to the insidious sounds that these violators of silence commit. Well, now you can rest peacefully, knowing that there exists a human-friendly robot that was designed with the sole intention of ensuring that those whom it protects are guaranteed a peaceful night's sleep free from the sound of cricket shenanigans. Peace now comes to you under the proud name of Cricket. Cricket offers complete protection from pesky cricket chirps by locking onto individual crickets that generate sound and immediately terminate said cricket's activities. Cricket has an effective area of attack of one whole half fathom, of one whole half fathom. Now we will go more in depth on how Cricket is winning the silent warfare on the battlefield that is your backyard. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, cricket actively listens for sounds. When the sound of a cricket is detected, the device will rotate to that direction and activate its ultrasonic deterrent to silence it. Also, a line laser is used to uh, mark the location. <laughs> Let's look at the total device breakdown. As you can see, this is our device in the exploded view. We have the solar panel, a directional horn, and a speaker array that emits sound. And we have the belt that stores the microphones and the servo, and the base and the bottom insert that holds all our components. This allows us to easily maintain and access our device. So let's dive deeper to understand what this process is about. We have five stages to consider. Day, night, alert, identification, and attack. During the day, Kirkwood is essentially preparing for the night, utilizing its uh, battery to store energy and its solar panel to harvest energy, or other way around. Our device uses an on-chip real-time clock to transition to the following stage. So the following two stages are uh, dependent on its listening system. Uh, its listening system is comprised of four major components. The first is electric condenser microphones, uh, chosen for their small size, uh, low power biasing, um, and high acoustical sensitivity. Uh, the second are microphone preamplifiers implemented in two gain stages with both active and passive filtering to narrow down onto um, fundamental frequencies of cricket chirps. The third is a voltage regulator used as a DC offset to go into the ADCs. And finally, the fourth is a precision peak detector which uh, has tailored attack and decay envelope characteristics and uh, followed by a comparator setting the noise threshold. So once uh, night is upon the cricket, um, one mic will be active and listening. The rest of the device will be asleep. Um, once a noise has been detected that meets or exceeds uh, the noise threshold, uh, the unit will wake up and enter its next mode. Here we can see the effectiveness of the peak detector. Not only does it act as a, as a wake up for the device, but it was also designed to ignore impulse noises shown on the left and recognize periodic peaks or chirps uh, shown on the right. Uh, once the device is uh, awake, it's now entered its alert mode. Um, at this point in time, one mic from each mic axis is enabled, as shown by the green icons. And um, at this point, the unit will evaluate which mic signal trips its comparator first to determine which mic axis the sound source is coming from. Once the mic axis has been uh, uh, determined, it will move to its next stage. So now moving the microphones on one, two microphones on one side, we move to the identification stage. We sample through our ADCs and microphones at 5.5 kilohertz. So Crickwood has been designed to recognize five major species of crickets, the Jamaican, fall field, snowy tree, southeastern field, and Texas field crickets. These are all indigenous species to the southwestern United States. And if the crowd thins out a little bit, we might hear some. 
<laughs> so uh, the recognition algorithm utilizes the frequency domain analysis uh, for cricket chirps. Um, and we also use a correlation algorithm to compare it to save samples on the chip. So luckily, the cricket spectrum is very simple and easy to recognize. So let's break it down. So let's say a loud vehicle wakes up our device. We take its audio data, we transform it into the frequency domain, and we correlate it against all of our saved samples. Upon the unsuccessful recognition, our device goes to sleep and goes back to night stage. However, what if a cricket wakes us up? Well, again, we take its frequency transform, see that it's one of our five species of cricket, and then we can go into the attack stage. Once the device determines that a cricket is present, it enters the attack mode. First part of attack mode is location. The ARM microcontroller will sample the two microphones that are on the active axis. These two data sets will then be shifted against and compared to find a best shape match correlation. The number of shifts it takes to find this best shape match is then used to determine the time delay between the signals through the sampling view. Now that we have the time delay, uh, we know the distance between the mics and the speed of sound, we could determine the angle of incidence. Using this calculated angle of incidence, we control the PWM signal of the servo motor. It ultimately turns the sound uh, reflected return. In order for the reflector to properly acquire its target, the turret needs to rotate. The turret is operated via the HS5485HB servo motor, which operates on 4.8 volts DC and draws 400 milliamps of current. The rotation of the servo is in 118 degrees. In order to, uh, in order to achieve the necessary nearly 360 degree rotation of the turret, a three to one gear ratio was implemented in the design. Uh, once Crickwit has uh, identified, it, uh, identified, located, and targeted the offending insect, it then deploys its anti-cricket audio deterrent. This deterrent is a focused and directional beam of audio that we generate with a 40 kilohertz carrier signal that is burst pulse width modulated with our anti-cricket frequency. Uh, this signal is then driven through an H-bridge, which amplifies it, which is powered by a 24 volt charge pump. This signal drives our parametric speaker array. The signal alone is not directional. The directionality comes from its positive interference using multiple transducers. You can see on the top chart, using one or two uh, transducers, the uh, signal is still omnidirectional, but as you add more speakers or transducers, the various uh, sound waves from each transducer overlap and create positive interference, which focuses the audio into what is called an audio laser, and you can direct it at a specific location. This audio is then uh, reflected through our custom audio reflector, which is what the servo allow, allows the servo to direct the audio towards the insect, and the audio uh, then inspires the insect to be quiet. Uh, once we have completed this phase, the attack phase is complete, and the quick wit returns to night mode. Now that you all know how the quick wit works, let's talk about what makes it work. It's powered by a ARM Cortex M4 processor. This utilizes three unique low power modes, which would be very useful for conserving battery during the day in our various stages. It has a on-chip real-time clock so we can determine day and night. It has multiple timers and many GPIOs and has three internal ADCs. Surrounding our microcontroller, here's our block diagram. You can see that we have a one cell battery, a solar charge controller with solar panel, and 3.3 volt voltage regulator along with a 5 volt buck boost converter. Uh, here you can see our PCB circuit. Uh, on the bottom we have our maximum power point tracking solar charge controller, 3.3 volt regulator, and 5 volt buck boost converter. Right above the 5 volt buck boost converter we have three switching MOSFETs which enable and disable our peripherals. On the left, we have the USB port and FTDI chip to provide USB debugging and also 5 volt charging. This diagram gives an overview of the software flow that implements the various stages we discussed uh, throughout the presentation. And here you can see what the device looks like in action complete with a real cricket. 
Um, so starting in the day stage, the device is held in a low power standby mode where it remains dormant until a scheduled event implemented by the on-ship uh, real-time clock enables the device to be woken up by specific pin change events, and this marks the transition from day to night. Uh, in night mode, the rising edge coming off one of the envelope detectors pulls the device out of sleep mode and moves it into alert mode. Once in alert mode, the next rising edge coming off of any of the three envelope detectors determines which pair of microphones the device activates and puts it into ID. If a positive ID is made, the device proceeds to attack, where it locates the sound source, rotates the sound reflector, and activates the speakers. After this, the device returns to sleep, where the process can start all over again. Thank you, Joe. For the project milestones, uh, they're right here, as depicted. As you can see, this project didn't happen overnight. Uh, one of the most challenging, yet fulfilling milestones was probably the total system integration. Uh, we accordingly planned to have it done a week before in case we had any minor adjustments or tweaks. Given a $400 budget, uh, this gave us the opportunity to be careful of where we spend our money and if there are any alternatives to save cost. And we're proud to inform that our sponsor that we uh, projected to be right at the budget. So that's Kirkwood. We hope that you've enjoyed our presentation and invite you for a live demonstration tomorrow at Design Day. Thank you.